I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. In today's video, as a part of our London Update series, we return to London, uh, where we're going to speak with one of our favorite independent shoemakers, uh, Daniel Wiegand with Catella Shoemakers. So Daniel, hey, thank you so much for uh, you know, meeting us uh, you know, in London so that we could uh, you know, just hear how things are going. So how has the lockdown been for you? Well, I think it's been a, a roller coaster for, for everyone around the world. I think, I think here in uh, the UK, the lockdown started end of March and if anybody would have told me that what it, how long it would go on and what things would be like now, I, I, you know, I, I don't think I would have believed them. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, know, you had an opportunity to visit America you know, on your first kind of inaugural uh, trunk show in early January of this year, January or February. And so from what I understand, it was a pretty successful trip. I mean, have you been able to kind of work on those orders, you know, while in lockdown? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I was overwhelmed by the really good response, like you said, in the end of February, beginning of March. And I definitely took uh, on enough work to, to keep me busy throughout these times. You know, the initial idea was to come back and service the clients in the end of May, beginning of June. And obviously that didn't happen. So I've had a bit more time to work on, on the things that I took commissions for. But now things are kind of starting to roll again. People are coming to London. Some, some of the locals that have placed orders are going to have their shoes be put in production soon. So everything's a bit behind schedule, but I, I've been busy and I've had time to kind of do a little bit of research and development and sort out the workshop and, and everything else that needs doing with a new business. Yeah. So, I mean, for your American clients, I mean, have you been able to work on any of their shoes, um, you know, despite not being able to see them? Well, I worked on all of their lasts and uh, make their fitting shoes. Some people have sent the fitting shoes to, so we've done Skype fittings or communicated through email just to get some feedback. And, you know, it's not the same thing as seeing somebody in person, but it's allowed the projects to progress best it can during these circumstances. You know, the challenge for Bespoke, especially at the beginning of the stage, is that, you know, you do have to be seeing the client and the customer. And so if you're not able to, you know, kind of bridge that gap with, you know, I guess Zoom or some Skype fittings, and then really for all intents and purposes, the process totally stops. Yeah, and I think most people understand that, and, and all the customers have been really uh, you know, patient and, and asking what they can do to help out or if there's anything we can do in the meantime. Some people even offer to order place orders for more shoes to <laughs> help out financially, but so far I've been doing quite okay. No, no real, um, too much financial pressure. Uh, but it remains what, what happens in the future, how long the lockdown goes on, how long we, we have to refrain from traveling. It's encouraging to hear that you've at least been able to uh, send some fitting shoes out. I mean, I've seen a few of, uh, of your customers that I'm familiar with, you know, be pretty excited to get this little care package in the mail so that they could, uh, you know, try on some shoes that uh, you had measured them for, you know, really just, what, five or six months previous, which is, you know, really about the same amount of time it probably would have taken anyway. Yeah, I think we're, we're not too far behind schedule. Uh, if things go according to plan, I'm hoping that there'll be a few projects that are ready to be finished in the next quarter. But it, we'll see what happens. Right now we're on time, but if things uh, stay the way they are, you know, we might fall behind a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you been able to deliver any actual kind of completed shoes yet? Take anything straight to finish? Yeah, I finished the first pair. Like my friend Michael Brown was one of the first people to get measured and order a pair when I went out on my own. And he got his shoes a few weeks ago and I think we were both very happy with them. I picked them up earlier today to send them out to the tree maker. And I think there's a few more projects for London clients that's gonna be finished in between four to eight weeks. Well, it's definitely a great time for people in the United Kingdom uh, and London for that matter to be commissioning bespoke items because, you know, in a lot of ways they're kind of being, uh, you know, thrown to the front of the line and really given uh, all the attention they could ever want without any competition from foreign clients 
uh, you know, shortening their meetings. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I think a lot of the UK clients are going to get a bit extra attention and uh, probably get their shoes a little bit quicker than the people from other areas of the world. It's certainly kind of an interesting times for sure. Uh, any interesting projects you've been working on? I mean, again, it's, we've all had so much more free time than we other, otherwise would have had. Have you been able to fill that with anything uh, particularly interesting? Yeah, no, I think I've been working on a few samples I think people will be quite excited about. Uh, it's not ready to show yet because I want people to, <laughs> to be available. Yeah, so that's a difficult uh, kind of challenge with, uh, you know, wanting to kind of show everyone what you're working on right now, but then not reveal too soon, you know, what it is you're working on before you're actually able to see clients again. Yeah, you know, you don't, you don't want to show something you're excited about and then uh, you can't see clients for maybe six months potentially, and it kind of yeah. falls out of people's memory. So once we can travel again, you know, I'd, I'd want to, I'd be ready to show it off. Is there anyone from whom that you'll be able to actually take their shoes all the way to finish without actually having seen them again? Yeah, there's a few people. They've had really good first fittings by the looks of it and by the feel of it. it, it it's like everything that we want it to be. But I kind of leave that up to the client. Personally, I'd like to see it in the flesh before I kind of sign it off. If they're really excited about it and uh, need, need some new shoes, uh, I'm happy to make it for them. And if there's any issues, we'll, we'll take care of that. Your maximum capacity per month anyway is probably, you know, not more than just a handful of shoes. Yeah, we, I can't make more than maybe one shoe a week, uh, to be honest. So even though the, it doesn't look like much, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the beauty of an independent shoemaker is that they're able to focus 100% kind of on your shoe. And again, one of the things uh, that uh, I always think about whenever I think about Catella is, um, you know, a lot of these in-house movements that you see the watchmakers, um, you know, making these days where everything is really designed and developed in-house. Uh, and in much the same way, you know, you're approaching shoemaking like that, where it's a truly bench-made product. You know, you do the measurements, the last making, the pattern making, you know, the clicking, uh, you know, sewing the uppers together, lasting it, and making the shoe. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a real privilege to have someone, I mean, especially a 2019 world champion of shoemaking, you know, to be able to have a pair of shoes that uh, you've kind of poured into that's really uh, quite exciting. I can't wait to get mine. I mean, so, you know, keep my name at the top of that list for, yeah, um, yeah. No, you know, and I think I think I a lot of customers arms. have uh, really developed, uh, we've developed our relationship between the client and the craftsman, especially during these kind of Skype fittings. A lot of time the fitting just turn into a, a regular conversation. Uh, probably a lot of people are bored at home, so it's, it's nice to see a new face. Uh, for, so that, that's been working out quite well. You know, follow up the fitting with the proper drink just like it would be done, you know, if we were doing it in person. Yeah, no, I think some people are ex as excited about the shoes as they are about the conversation. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, you know, so many of us, that's what we've missed most out of all this. I mean, it's been really challenging for me not to be able to make it to London. I mean, I just miss seeing everyone, kind of all of our friends. I and mean, that's been kind of the purpose of this London Update series is to allow us to check in because I know that a lot of uh, those watching, uh, a lot of the viewers on our channel are just as interested to hear how everyone's doing and really concerned to make sure that everyone's doing well. No, for sure. There's definitely a cause for concern. You know, if you walk around Mayfair here, there's a lot of sh shops that have closed down and, you know, it remains to see which one will open up again. Fortunately for me, being quite small, you know, you don't make a lot of money, but you don't have a lot of overheads either. So it's, it's a little bit, uh, it takes longer for, <laughs> for me to feel it. Yeah, for sure. But we, uh, you know, I'm sure we, London misses all the, the visitors. Well, Daniel, it's glad to hear you're doing well. And, uh, you know, thanks for, um, you know, dropping by and allowing us to kind of catch up. No, it's my pleasure. Nice to see you and your film crew here. Yeah, yeah. I know. They're having all the fun. You know, here I am stuck in Dallas and, uh, you know, I'm seeing Reese, you know, you know, run by Paul and grab a, you know, grab a sandwich that I would have wanted or, you know, grabbing a pint at the pub. Yeah. Uh, you know. But, you know, I guess at least if yeah, someone's going to you'll have to, it. you'll have to stick to your uh, Texas barbecue. Well, um, <laughs> you know, keep us posted yeah. on how things are going. And of course, you know, Catella Shoemaker on Instagram, probably the best way to stay up to date about everything that you're working on. Anyway, it's great to see you continuing to make shoes. And I really look forward to seeing 
uh, what you continue to put out. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you as soon as the, um, they let me in the country. <laughs> yeah, and, and vice versa, right? Yeah, as soon yeah. as the airlines uh, allow us to fly. That's totally nuts. Well, Daniel, hey, best of luck. And uh, again, thanks for the update. Bye-bye. So there we are, Daniel Wiegand. Uh, it was really great to be able to uh, bump into him on the street and kind of get an update. Uh, you know, of course, um, you know, independent shoemaker, you know, launching Catella Shoemaker, you know, right at the beginning of 2020. Uh, you know, certainly probably uh, not the best time to be launching a new business, but it really seems that he's getting on uh, just really quite fine. And so that's very exciting to hear that. Of course, make sure you check out uh, Catella Shoemaker on Instagram or follow Daniel Wiegan. Best way to stay up to date about what's going on there. We actually filmed, you know, the first uh, measurement uh, that he did uh, here in Dallas with uh, Catella tell a shoemaker and so you can find the link to that video in the description up below. Of course, if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, please do so. It's how we support this channel. Uh, and there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories like this beautiful burgundy London dot tie that I'm wearing today, kind of in honor of the fact that I'm not able to be in London. Uh, and of course, we've got a beautiful collection of sovereign grade uh, printed silk pocket squares. Of course, I am Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their work wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thank you for joining me as a part of today's London Update Series.